Hey, uh, good Wednesday morning, everybody. Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich here. Here's an update on our severe weather risk today. It's all about watching the instability of the warm, humid air. In fact, I wasn't, I haven't been this, this happy in a while to see rain in the morning because at least temporarily the rain and clouds this morning are helping us out. Let me show you the view here. You can see what's going on. Big shield of rain moving in. A couple things to note here. Um, first is this warm front, which is kind of the leading edge of the warm, humid air. If this surges to the north and we get into this warm, humid air down here, that could set the stage for some strong and severe storms. But also notice back to the west, the main cold front is still back in Tennessee. This line of showers and storms trying to develop here is something to watch because I've seen some instability creep up ahead of that in parts of Georgia this morning and even eastern Alabama. As we go in closer, you can see there are some cloud to ground lightning strikes and we have seen some stronger storms back here towards Brevard and the upstate of South Carolina. So those areas will be worth watching. Now, if you look at, if you're looking for instability, a couple things you're looking for, at least I am, and I think you should be looking for as well, is look at the surface where dew point temperatures are rising pretty quickly. So if we look real quickly, at the dew point temperatures this morning. You could see we're in about 59 here, but see these 60 degree dew points to the south? That's warmer, more humid air. That's also where temperatures are closer to 70. So that warm front is really gonna be key about how much instability gets up to the north. And I think what the thing we're watching is really if this first batch of rain this morning moves out and then allows the warm front to come in and then we see instability develop back here. So there's still a chance even though you see the severe weather risk kind of minimal this morning. That low risk is still there. I'm going to turn off the radar just for a second. But you see the low risk in yellow and the uh, medium risk there in orange. That still encompasses a big chunk of the eastern part of the Piedmont into central North Carolina and then down to the south. So you kind of get an idea there. So let's take a look at some of this instability. So if we do some real-time analysis here, we can look at where the surface instability or CAPE is. And you can see, as I mentioned, there is this little area um, kind of pushing up ahead of the cold front. So even though we're really stable here, you don't see any of that thunderstorm fuel. It's all south of the warm front. The fact that some is getting pulled up ahead of the main front here is something that we need to watch going into the afternoon hours because that potentially um, could lead to some potential stronger storms. So let's take a look at where that uh, significant tornado parameter is. Um, the significant tornado parameter is kind of showing up here in parts of um, eastern Alabama into Georgia. So that's another parameter we got to keep a close eye on because when I see that, um, I tend to get very, very worried about the rotational potential in some of these. Uh, Storm Prediction Center looks at that quite a bit as well as the, the significant um, supercell parameter. So right there, you can see it perking up to our west. So how should things unfold this afternoon? Well, we can take a look. All right, now that we're within the time frame of this severe weather, we can focus strictly on the short range rapid refresh product. So this one was run just this morning. Um, we'll go through time. You see the showers over us this morning. I think the, the storms to watch, honestly, are going to be twofold. You're going to be watching these storms, which are basically down to our south, right in here, and then watching anything that forms along the cold front as it pushes in from the west. So this is stopping around 1 o'clock this afternoon. We'll go to 2 o'clock. We'll go to three o'clock and notice as we get into the afternoon, some strong storms here, but look at these back towards the foothills. These could be supercells. These are ones you definitely got to watch right around five, six o'clock pushing through. And actually look, they actually have some kind of, um, kind of hook looking kidney beans. So while not overwhelming support for severe weather, boy, the fact that we've got some of these isolated cells this evening, is something to watch. So the rain this morning is certainly helping us out, maybe delaying things a little bit. But I think watching it this unfold over the next 18 hours, those storms this evening are going to be the ones to watch. Let's go back and show you that again, right in here. So four, five, six, seven o'clock time frame, those storms moving out. One of the things I always like to look at is rotational possibility updraft helicity. So let's take a quick look at that. So I switched over to a short range product looking at updraft helicity, basically where we expect to see rotating thunderstorms. So we'll go into the afternoon hours and I'm going to stop this right around uh, 2 p.m. Uh, again, nothing too off the charts here, but notice what happens this evening. Remember those rogue cells I showed you this evening around 5, 6 o'clock? So we get to about 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 
seven o'clock. Notice there's not a ton of them. Okay, it's not it's not the amount, but we've got one right there and a couple in here, and then a few out here. So that's the time frame. Honestly, if we're going to see rotating storms or supercells, it's that time frame right in there, that five, six, seven, eight o'clock this evening time frame. And again, remember what's happening at this time. Let me back it up, and I'll I'll go to that time frame on the future radar. You see the cells moving across the area. So you see those, let me zoom in, these cells moving right there could potentially be rotating and that would be right along the leading edge of the front. So what's likely going to happen is the rain that's over us this morning keeps us stable. Not much happens. And then we go into the afternoon and likely what's going to happen is the warm front at this time is surged up here, pushing warm, humid air up to the north. And then the cold front comes through and there's a narrow band of instability right there that kicks off those showers and storms and they're are they're strong enough and there's enough wind shear that they could be severe so that's kind of the time frame i'm looking if anything has happened it's kind of delayed things a little bit until the cold front gets here once the main front gets here this afternoon that's in this evening is probably where we're going to see the highest risk of course i'll have you covered throughout the afternoon and into the evening stay weather aware make sure you have the wcnc app it'll keep you safe give you alerts and also let you know when we're live streaming so you can check out our coverage